Hey everybody, good morning, and thank you so much for being here with Ashley and I. And Ashley, thank you for being here and joining me today on this hot topic around HR and recruiting. Thank you, thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm excited to have this conversation. We sort of had this conversation with each other, you know, a while ago, and this is still a hot topic and a, and a big conversation that salons and salon owners are having, um, and just our industry in general. But just to let people know who you are a little bit, um, you have been in the industry for 17 years, right? All mm -hmm. servicing one salon company, Lords and Ladies, out of Pennsylvania. Yeah. Um, but you started with being behind the chair as a stylist, you've been an educator, and now worked your way into more of that HR and recruiting more for the operational side of the business, right? Definitely, yeah. It's been an that. awesome, awesome journey. Yeah, so you get to understand a little bit of what that journey looks like for a new stylist coming in and what you're looking for. But you're so much more than that, like your title is not just that, right? You are first and foremost, just a super cool and kind human being in life. Like you're just one of the nicest people that I think I've met. Um, an industry professional, just have been, you know, a lot of experience in being able to see a lot of things happening in our business. Your mom and a military wife. Yeah, so you wear a lot of hats and you're busy. Definitely. <laughs> so Definitely. I was reading your um, your bio of yourself, and I think we had it shared too. But the most interesting thing that I think we can kick this off with is what you like to do for fun. And it was sort of like trails and hiking and running and things. And you said that your most your best recruiting ideas come from starting on the trails. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh, yes. I it's been it's been probably ever since I could remember is when I'm running and I can just be by myself. It's when I start to think about all kinds of creative things and I can tell if I haven't done it that I'm losing it a little bit. So, I can't wait to be on the trail and I don't listen to anything and just kind of like be with myself and my thoughts and just run through like what the week looked like, months look like and start to cr be creative so no music there's no like tupac no in your ear pods anything no. nothing okay. wow no. and no. and just kind of thought so can, let's yeah. just start with that on kind of you know within the industry right now and your ideas flowing to you naturally and kind of what's working and what's not working what are you actually finding in salons or for your company specifically that you're finding is actually working for recruiting today. Okay, awesome. So for us, I feel we've we've definitely shifted a lot. We've navigated through different things, especially in the last three years, but we're really good at coming back in, we call it our war room. <laughs> and we we definitely try to, what can we do that's better? And how can we better our employees? Because they really are our number one our number one focus. And um, for us this year, really, we honed in on them as individual people. So what their goals are outside of the company and what their goals are inside the company. We really focused on what we like to call these coffee chats. So we have them set throughout the year and people can come and just, they don't have to come for any type of reason, but just come and kind of bounce ideas off of each other. And, you know, we tend to go off on different topics. It could be just about life and in general, or, you know, someone's struggling with referral cards and another person's really good at referral cards. And, you know, they can really get these amazing creative ideas off of each other and feel like this connection. We don't have a ton of people that come to them, but that's what's amazing about it is like, it's really intimate, it's small, and we are such a big company. So it feels really good to come together like that. Um, so I would say that's been working and our relationships with beauty schools have been really, really going so well. Um, I mean, that's pretty much my main focus for the past eight years since I've been doing it. And that's, that's what I can really tell everyone is if you're not in a relationship with your beauty schools, your community around you, you need to be, you 100% need to be and support them for sure. Who's, I really like the idea of your coffee chat. Who's invited to those? Everyone, everyone. So like 
a front desk person could come, a manager can come, an owner of our our company can come. Um, you know, we franchised our company about two years ago, so now we have owners that are in integrated within the the system and the flow of what we've created in our company. So that's that's been an awesome dynamic and. That's also been a really cool thing too, because we've been able to talk to employees about furthering their career and possibly one day owning a salon. Yeah, that's awesome. And it gives them that sense of ownership and that they belong and that they're a part of a bigger picture and they're contributing to something big. Oh, okay. definitely. Definitely. Um, and then during those times, during those coffee chats, they can contribute their own thoughts and their own ideas. And that does oh. kind of keep people invested in in the business that they work in or for the company that they're working for, because they are contributing, can see, you know, things changing or things working that maybe they've suggested or thought or that were their ideas. Yeah, I have to say, like, I love I from the moment I worked, I started working at Lords and Ladies, it's always been an open forum. So there's never been a secret that we didn't know about. Or, you know, if we're doing something, you know, coming up in the next year, we knew about it. And um, we always talk about the future and we always talk about what's currently happening. So I think that's really important too, is not necessarily hiding, you know, many things that are going on in the company. I think it's so important for all of the employees to know what's happening and to feel like, yes, and to feel like they're contributing. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because as a stylist or an employee of a business, if you don't feel like you have an understanding of the direction that the company is going, you're kind of scared or you're you're yeah. unsure and you don't know. So yeah, being transparent as salon owners is huge. So if you're a salon owner and you're not doing that currently, share some of that stuff with them. Share some of your big goals or your 2023 vision with your team and where you're going and maybe how you finished out 2022 um, and, and be open and honest and transparent with them. So I think that that's- 1,000%. Yeah. Um, and being present and, you know, those coffee talks and being in the schools, definitely salons right now are having a really hard time. Like you can't go to any salon and they're like, oh, we're fully staffed and everything is great. And we're not hiring anybody. No, everybody is looking for somebody always <laughs> and ongoing, even if their chairs are, you know, happen to be filled. Yeah. It's a constant cycle that they're always looking for new talent and new people to join their business. Um, and kind of like what you said that you're doing in schools, it has to start with being present in those schools, right? Is there anywhere else besides the schools? And we could talk about the schools, but is there anywhere else besides the schools that you're sort of building a presence for the business and the brand? Well, yeah, I mean, we definitely with the podcast, we're trying to build more of an aware um more of like a community feeling, not necessarily just around our surrounding area, but more in the industry. So just like, you know, we don't have all of the answers, that's for sure. And we don't, I don't recruit like perfectly every single time, but I have been creative and we have been doing all of these amazing things and we want to be able to share them with people. So the podcast has been going really well, but I also feel like, you know, talking to different people and interviewing them, they have a different story and everyone has a different path. And I feel like, you know, sharing them out with the, our industry professionals is so important because if someone can hear something in a different way, you may be telling them, it's like a parent telling a kid, you know, this is, this is what you need to do, but they hear it from someone else and it just clicks differently. I feel, you know, we just have to keep talking about our experiences and we've been, we've been there and we've done that and this is what happened for us. And I think that's important. And now not a lot of people know that there's so many options in our industry too. So I feel like that Absolutely. has been awesome. Mm -hmm, definitely. So what does it look like with your relationships with the schools? How does that start? Or if somebody who's oh. never been to, maybe we got a salon owner listening that has never even visited their schools in their area. Where, like, where do you suggest that they even start? Okay, so listen, they wanna talk to you. So it's gonna be easy. They want you to come in. They want you to do demos. They want you to be a part of this because again, it's like them standing up and telling their children, you know, you need to look the part and you need to do this in the salon environment. To hear it from a salon provider or an owner, it's it just comes off more like a little bit better, but also in a different way, you're being more creative and you're not just, they're not just listening to their teacher talk all day. So it's really fun to be able to do that. So really like Google whoever is around you, your local beauty school, 
find what that email address is or just pick up the phone and call and you're you're pretty much in. Hey, you know, I'm so and so from this salon and I would love to be a part of your school. How can I get involved? How can I be a part of these demo days? And maybe going in and meeting the school staff, like the teachers, the directors, yeah. things like that first and let them know who you are and about your company and they'll stand behind you about, you know, a little bit more as well. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah. Um, we, so how often we do you them. go? Oh my gosh. So we go all the time. So I've actually in the past two years created a recruiting team. And this year they've, we've been in, um, this past year we've been to a school 36 times. So we're constantly, constantly involved with the schools. So like I was going to say, um, I try to invite them, the teachers into our company as often as we possibly can. So anytime we have an open house, anytime we have an event, I invite them to come into it. And um, actually this Wednesday, I'm having an event just for them. And it's a virtual event. It's super easy for them to log on virtually and I'm calling it Wine Wednesday, it's at night, we're just gonna talk about what's coming up for the year so that they're in the know of what we're doing and um, you know how can we better support them. Mm -hmm. Which is awesome so that they get to know and understand your business a little bit better too, but sometimes the schools have, I don't know all of the exact details on this, but they have like ratings on their placement ratings, right? So yep. like how how many of their students find a job in a salon right after or at the time of graduating. So that is very important to them yep. to help them find a salon home to be a part of at the time that they graduate. And when they have a salon that they're working with, like what you're doing or anybody that's watching, they know about your business. They know about your salon culture. They know what to expect. Maybe there's somebody that's already done it that can share a story. So there's a little bit more around it than just here's a salon in the area go check them out right so they know definitely. who you are definitely and we're we're big we're we're a big um we're a big company so it's very important for us to build those relationships because we don't want anyone to feel intimidated or, or scared to come into our locations yes. and um, shadowing has been a really great opportunity for them to just come in with no commitments and just kind of see what we're what we're doing and what we're about. That's a really good point that you bring up about being intimidated to go in because we kind of talk about how the salon clients are intimidated to come to salons because it's not their home. They don't know what to expect. They don't know who they're seeing. But saying that about the students coming in and applying for a job or doing an interview is also terrifying. Yeah, it's so scary for them to do that because yeah they're meeting with people who've already been there done that they are you know professional stylists and they're working and they're you know doing the thing and so they're walking in as a brand new person still in school ready to graduate maybe and they're scared so how can yeah. salons make that experience a little more, more comfortable a little bit you know not so overwhelming for them make them feel like they're still a part of you know the industry how do you guys do that so for us it starts it starts with being present in the schools and just kind of showing them our human side right so we're just we're just us you know we've we're not scary it's it's just a friendly face that you're seeing and so it kind of breaks the walls down a little bit in that sense and then we bring them into shadow and a job shadow is no commitment just come and see who we are and see what we're about but it's really important to link that person up with someone that you feel is going to show them the best experience so you have to maybe pinpoint a person that's a really good mentor in your location that's going and willing to show them around and show them um, you know the day-to-day -day things that happen in the salon so that's really important too after after that they go home think about it you know I'll follow up or that person salon uh, owner will follow up and just say you know how did everything go so and so told me that you had a really great time and they had they really loved it you know just kind of building still really building a relationship it's it's almost like dating a little bit you're just kind of mm -hmm. easing into this and mm -hmm. then bring them back in and just have a conversation with them. We don't, you know, I, I feel like gone are the days where I'm going to sit down and talk to you and, and ask, ask you a question and then you're going to answer it. And then I'm going to ask you another question and then you're going to answer it. But let's just get to know each other. You know, like you would really, you're going to really know about someone after a couple of minutes of just talking. 
And yeah. um, I think that's really, really important. And after that, I think, um, you know, you send them home to really think about, is this the place that I really fit in? You could also do another like day to come in and do more, maybe like an internship. We've done that also. So we've done like two week paid internships. Again, no pressure. It's just another way for them to really experience who we are. So that's worked yeah. out really well. You kind of brought it around full circle too, because you said you have a team, you've built a team over the last couple of years that goes in to the schools and they're sort of your recruiting team. So then when yeah. those students come into shadow or whatnot in the salon, they're seeing familiar faces. So they okay. know who they can go to, to say hello. They don't walk in seeing, you know, a room full of people that they've never seen or talked to before. They, they already feel like they kind of know you because you're creating that presence in the schools right from the beginning. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So we know in a lot of salons and a lot of states, there's this battle between commission-based salons and booth renters and independent suites and who's taking who and what does that look like? Um, how, what are the schools doing? What are you finding? Are they, are they coaching them one way or the other? Are they talking about going independent? Are they talking about them to go into an employee-based salon? What are, what are our instructors saying to the students these days? <laughs> so I loved this question so much that you, <laughs> I really did, because honestly, I just, I think our teachers are really trying to do their best in every aspect. And I have to give them a lot of credit. What they do is, is extremely hard every day. But I also feel like they really encourage the students to get into a salon environment. You are never going to know what it's like to be in a salon environment if you're going independent right away. And I don't really feel like they're very confident in how successful they're going to be in that in that aspect. So yes, they want to encourage the student no matter what and support them, but they do talk about how a salon environment is so important. And I believe the same thing. You know, it just you just can't beat that environment and that team atmosphere and it's such a good feeling when you can bounce that energy off of other people. But um, but again, like I do think that they're just trying to support them in any way that they possibly can. Yeah. And really, if we think about the bottom line of that question, the instructors are there to teach our, our future professionals how to yeah. get licensed and be there, right? And if we go back to what you were mentioning earlier, uh, be present and show them who you are and show them your company, show them your brand, show them your culture, show them why even they as an instructor would say, oh my gosh, this would be such a great salon to work in. They're going to share that information with those students. So at the end of the day, if they're putting them or recommending, you know, independence or booth renter or in a commission-based salon, but they know who you are in your community and what you offer, they're going to nudge that way. You're going to have that in with them already, right? So yeah. We really hold the salon owners really can hold an upper hand in that just by what they're doing and showing up in the salon, in the schools. Yeah, I mean, I I love that you said that because I feel like for us in the salon as leaders, we have this job to do that. I really feel like we need to get out there more and show our beauty professionals that are just starting out all of the things that we can do in this industry. So I do think it's important to really get involved. I mean, that's probably my number one thing to say. Mm -hmm. And it takes time. Like you've been doing it for eight years in the schools, right? You can't go yeah. and do your very first school visit, show up and expect everybody to know who you are and everybody to want to instantly come and work for you. It's time and time and time again. It's being consistent over and over again. Yeah, so, yeah absolutely. There is, you know, the saying, hire slow, fire fast, but everybody's looking for stylists or service providers right now. So do they just take anybody that comes into them or does that rule still apply? Like, should they really be like taking their time and being choosy about who they invite into their business and, um, or do they just take anybody? All right. I love this question too, because I, I feel for salon owners that are going through this. I really do. But I think, you know, at the end of the day, you have a team that already exists, right? So know that if I'm bringing this person in, does this person is this going to, is this person going to fit into my culture that already exists, right? So that's really like the number one question that I would say. Um, and then find, you know, see if they, what kind of passion they have for the industry. So I think, are they going to fit into the culture? Do they have passion? And are they willing to learn? Are they willing to 
kind of dive into your culture, go to that continued education classes, you know, what are they willing to do to get to where they need to be? And I think if you have those three things, then you everything else can be taught. And I think that you have a good fit for yourself. But I do think it's important to really consider the team that you already have. If you're bringing someone that doesn't fit in, you're upsetting everybody else. And I think that that doesn't really uh, work forever. You know, that doesn't work. So, you know, you want to support the team that you have for sure. It'll disrupt your entire culture yeah, that you've already created. Right? What is your timeline of hiring somebody so say you find a candidate at the school they just graduated or maybe it's not even somebody fresh out of school maybe it's just somebody that's already been licensed and you're looking to bring them into the business what is that timeline from very first conversation to very first day on the floor oh that is a good question oh first day on the floor yeah okay <laughs> i love this um so i think reaching out to if you have someone that's reaching out to you and they want a job you need to be very quick at getting back to them you cannot wait like if you need to shoot them a text message if you need to call them email them i think texting honestly you get you get their attention a lot faster they're used to communicating that way i know it doesn't sound so professional but that's definitely the way that i connect better with people um once that happens you're going to bring them in and go through that process that i was just talking about when you come into our company we have you salon assisting and we also have you going through continuing education classes so it's not very long it's like six to eight weeks but we have you going through those classes because we want you to feel confident we want you to feel like you're ready to go and you can take on anything that comes in the door and you know after that then they're then they are on the chair so it depends like um, in our state, I know that every state is different, but in our state, if you are in school, you can actually salon assist. So we have a lot of, a lot of employees that are super young and they're, you know, maybe they go to Votech, they're as young as 15 years old, 16 years old, and they, they stay with us for a long time after, you know, if we did bring someone in that did graduate and licensed, you're talking maybe like that, um, I would say two months, you know. So they're so in those an, classes. There's an investment piece from the Definitely. salon, right? Like salons need to, and that's something I think important to call out is Definitely. you have to invest in the people that you're trying to bring in, especially if you want to keep these people for a long period of time rather than them coming in, going through your training program for a few months, and then they're out the door to booth rent or in their own suites, right? Like if you want to keep them, yeah. you have to show them how, how you're investing in them, what you're able to provide for them that's different than what they could get on their own right? Definitely. How you're keeping them. Absolutely. Okay. So I think we got a lot of the hiring and finding in the schools now. <laughs> and I want to kind of switch now into, all right, now you already have this team or, you know, obviously recruiting is still always ongoing, but what about the team that you currently have? It is, you and I both have been in this industry now for 17 and 18 years. And <laughs> yeah. I even like things are very different today than when I was behind the chair, you know, that many years ago. An yeah. employee handbook, right? People have that, people don't have that, people need to rewrite them. What is changing? Like, what are some of those key things that need to be there or that need to be adjusted and reflected to today's time in an employee handbook? Or do they just get rid of it all together and just let it free? Oh free no, <laughs> you need a you need a handbook. Okay. <laughs> you need something to to reference back to. So I'm going to speak for for what I what I do and what our company does. For us, like I said before, we constantly go back and we revisit things. And I think like if my team was here right now, they would totally agree that we've. We have discussed and rediscussed the handbook and do we change this and do we change that? And we all go back to, you know, what we've create, what our leader has created 40 years ago. So his whole main focus was to, when you have an employee, a stylist that comes in and they're starting out, he wants to build you as fast as possible. So your goal is to work three days a week, making a full-time salary. And, that has always been our like mantra. Like we want you to work less and still gain that amazing salary. And how do we continue to, to do that? And do we need to change that? And I think what we came, what we came up with was, no, we don't need to change that, but we need to keep 
telling our employees why. And that was something that we really needed to focus on was why we do what we do and why we put so much time into you in the beginning and why it's so important for you to be able to have that that freedom you know as, when you're 22 years old you know you're still so young when you are at that three days a week and you have so much life to live and we're all for that trust me we want you to have that life balance we want you to be with your family you know so in the beginning we do we do kind of go through like can you do four to five days a week can you do these hours and you know if not we we go back and forth but we definitely come come to an agreement that works for both of us and i think that's really important because if you're not doing that then i think you lose a lot of who you are as a as a salon as a company so we always go back to this is who we are and this is what we've built our whole entire company on so we have to stay true to that but we do need to get better at explaining why we do it and i think once we continue that conversation and we have those conversations it kind of already clicks with people and they're like okay all right so you know i think i think it's a really hard line to walk right now and it is difficult and it is it is trying sometimes but we always have you know, I think the number one thing is to be honest and to continue the conversations with your employees. Don't just let them, you know, windle, windle away because I think that that, you know, that's not really a good feeling for them. But mm -hmm. if you're continuing the honesty and this is why we do this, I feel like that's it just goes a very long way. Mm -hmm. You said something a little bit ago, though, that I think is so important. I just want to call it out again is for a business that's been around for 40 years and you guys are constantly changing and evolving. But something that you said stayed constant was showing that you care for your team and their work life balance and their health and wellness and their mental being and their growth and that you want them to be very successful and make a ton of money but yeah. still not get burnt out essentially, right? Like working a limited yeah. schedule. Yeah, I mean, listen, burnout is is a big topic and I've been talking about that a lot. And it's, it's something that um, our education director, she totally gets it too. She's been bringing people in to educate towards that as well. So like there is this missing piece, right? Like we teach all of these technical things and then we miss that how do I combat this burnout feeling? How do I come home and still feel good about myself? So I think, you know, if if we continue to focus on that and really, you know, tell them the why, and we can really bring in all of this full circle. Mm -hmm. And that why piece is really huge too, because you could put everything in the handbook and just say, this is how it is, and this is yeah. how our business operates. But when they understand why that this is the way it is, they stand behind it a little bit more, or they at least understand that, you know, maybe through trial and error, we have found that this is the best, you know, way for this company. And right. then do you share, so like while you're in the interview process with people, do you share the handbook with them? Like, do you share, these are our, our policies and procedures. This is what our handbook looks like. This is what time off looks like so that they know like how you support them. That's a great question. So I highlight the handbook a little bit. So we we will verbally highlight the handbook. I feel like if you hand them so much so many words and you feel they're they're like, oh my God, like this is crazy. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so I I totally highlight all of the amazing benefits that we have and the perks and we do um, paid time off and we have um, health and dental and 401k and all of these great things to support you and continued education. And so definitely highlight all of those amazing things. And then when they're in the orientation process, when they're, you know, they are hired, they're here, then I think that that's an appropriate time to really dive deep into the handbook. Mm -hmm. Okay, I need to say this because I didn't say this at the beginning and I was supposed to, but there is on your um, panel, there is a chat option and you, if for anybody that's listening, has questions for Ashley um, about hiring, recruiting, school visits, handbooks, anything that we've already been talking about, you can go ahead and drop your question in that chat box. And then when we are finished, uh, we have Elisa who is monitoring that and she will be able to share those with us at the end of the session. So, okay, sorry about that. I just wanted to make sure people know to put that in there. Um, what are some other like very important things or maybe some things that were not in the handbook in the past that maybe you felt like you needed to add in um i mean i think 
being very clear on your expectations is huge. So, you know, showing up on time, how you are coming to work, you know, you, your hair, your makeup, everything needs to, to be presentable. You need to be professional, um, you know, and also going over your social media requirements too. I think that's huge. So, you know, how do you represent the company outside of work as well? So a lot Big of those topic. things are very important. Yeah. Yes. Yes, your your personal social media is not your professional social media. That's correct. Yeah, that's that's a yes. big one. Yeah. Okay. Um. So another conversations around um our industry outside of just preventing burnout in in salons is the term silent quitting. Mm. And what does that actually even mean? Does that mean people are trying to leave? Does it mean that people are just trying to balance a little bit more? Are you hearing anything about silent quitting? And what do you think are some red flags to it? Or what does it even mean to you, first of all? Well, it means that someone isn't feeling quite like they did when they first started. So, but that's an easy thing to notice. If you're really invested in your team, you know these people, you've been around these people, um, you're going to start to notice that they're more reserved. They're not showing up to team events. They're not coming to the meetings that we have. Um, you know, maybe they're not rebooking their clients. You know, things like that that start to pop up. I think it's time for hey, let's have let's have a meeting. Let's just talk. You know, how's everything going? How are you? I just wanted to check in with you. And I think that's so important because maybe there is something going on that you had no idea about and you could help them with it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but if someone's checked out and they're already looking to leave, you know, obviously that's that's a whole other topic. And and if they are not really being a team player, then maybe, you know, it is best for them to go and um, wish them well and always say, you can always come back, but definitely being open and, and talking with them. Hey, I've noticed that you you haven't been yourself. How can I help you? You know, mm -hmm. those are really good good questions. So somebody who's kind of pulled back. So like when they get started, they're pretty excited. Everything's good. They're feeling yeah. good. Everything's great. And then you notice that they kind of start to pull back a little bit. Maybe they're not rebooking as much. Maybe they're not right. showing up to different events, all of those things. And then it's time for a conversation. If you feel that somebody's going to be doing this, what do you like do you suggest people wait it out and just say okay just go ahead and keep going in the direction that you're going and just if that's okay to to go down that path or do they try to like pull them back in so i like like i said i think talking to them honestly like hey like these things i have i have been seeing these are our expectations how can i help you succeed in these expectations you know maybe it's like uh, again like a schedule change or you know, something's happening at home that you had no idea about. But all of these things, I think if you show that I can help you, how can I help you? You know, you're going to go to sleep at night way better than if you just kind of let it go. And and that's how I I feel about letting someone go as well. So just mm -hmm. just continuing the conversation on, hey, these are the expectations. How can I help you with them? And, you know, then when it comes down to having a difficult conversation, they're not really surprised yeah so show so at the very first red flag show up for them bring it exactly. to their attention hey i'm noticing this being open honest and transparent with them you know what can i do how are you feeling try to figure out what the underlying issue is yep. and at the end of the day if you can turn it around great if you can't turn it around you know yeah. then okay I too mean, right so like every everyone has this um these change of seasons in their life right so maybe just someone just isn't feeling that season in in the company and that's okay i think it's important to recognize that and if they're not feeling it and they're they're like looking to go somewhere else support it because i think if you really try to keep them and they just are not willing to participate in what your expectations are then it's better to to just support them on on their journey yeah. and always you know if it's a good employee welcome them back mhm mm yeah if they're not a right fit if they don't find that it you know meets what they're looking for that's really fine um so silent quitting silent firing 
right? Some salon yeah. owners are like, hey, I noticed that, you know, during the interview and everything was great and you're so, yeah. you know, perfect fit. And then six weeks later, they're like, oh, maybe they're not quite the perfect fit. I'm starting to see who you truly are and, and some behaviors and things. Maybe this isn't actually going to work out. And yeah. instead of having that conversation, some salon owners are like, you know, what? I'm just not going to book you anybody or I'm just not going to give you the time and attention that you need and just kind of hope you quit. Yeah. So that would not be my favorite thing to do. Um, because again, like you, if you know that someone's not the right fit or you can see that something is not driving in the team atmosphere, you have to call it out. You have to say like, that this is not right. You know, this, this is what I was thinking. What were you thinking? What were your thoughts? What were your expectations? Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. get get what they were thinking and what their expectations were because maybe you didn't explain it correctly, or you know, maybe they just had this other other thought, or they were on a different track and you were on a different path. Mm -hmm. um, I think just communication is huge because if you don't have that, they don't have a chance to correct it, mm -hmm. and that's you know, we've you know, all of us can say that we've been in situations like that where it's been very difficult to kind of sit back and okay, these, these are what we need to fix. And maybe you already know that they're not going to fix it, but you have to give someone the opportunity to be able to at least work on it. Because, mm -hmm. you know, like I said before, when it comes down to that difficult conversation, they're not so surprised. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people will live up to the expectations that you have for them. And if you have very low expectations or the perception that they can't do something, they probably won't. But that really does align with that higher, slow, fire, fast question that I had. And so the answer really is still yes. Yes, you should take your time. Yes, you should be choosy. Yes, you should, you know, meet with people multiple times, make sure that they're the right fit with your current culture um, and that they're going to fit in with the direction that you're trying to bring your salon company. And then don't silent fire people, right? Like no. not, not a great idea. If you have noticed no. those red flags and maybe they're not the right fit, they might be feeling that same way also that they, they probably recognize that maybe this isn't the right fit for them also. And maybe it's a mutually agreed upon decision but it's probably not a good idea to just let somebody and it's not fair to them either right like to just kind of no. drag them along or hold them out let them know and and just move move on and and then just go forward with your business absolutely yeah um and one last question and it's really around salon software maybe this is just around your what you guys do in your business or what your thoughts are there's a lot of salons too that we see some of them there's they're totally different some of them give full range access right but there's some salon owners that Think that they hold the keys to keeping them in their business if they don't allow them to see anything in the salon software so they put their clients in their formulas their notes their service history like all of those things but then they're like i don't want my team to see any of this information because if they were going to leave they're going to take it all right yeah. don't you think they can take it all anyways yeah. like don't you think through the power of social media they can find people that oh, came yeah. and sat in their chair you know is there, do, is there a benefit to doing that or locking that down with somebody? Or does that, does that also fall into sort of like that trust, I trust you and that open, honest transparency thing? I think that there's this whole thing around entrepreneurship right now. And I feel like if you can really help them build a business within your business and you give them that opportunity to do that, and that's that's totally with your software system. You know, they have the opportunity to book their appointments anywhere that they are. Um, they have the opportunity to maybe call the last the last couple of clients that they haven't seen. You know, give them the the freedom to do that because they're able to really take their career to the next level with that. And I think that's that's really cool if you're able to be able to give them that entrepreneur feeling. You know. And that's a success story for you as the salon owner, too, because you're helping people grow their business and grow their future. And then you're just going to you know, keep doing that. I love that. Absolutely. OK, yes. I'm going to see Elisa. Are there any questions from anybody that is watching for Ashley? Yes. Sorry, it took me a moment to get off of mute. Yes, okay. we have some really good questions. Um, awesome. I think you guys are going to be upset you didn't leave enough time. Just kidding. <laughs> um, we left enough time. I'm kidding. Okay, the first question that came in is, um, what if you're a salon with zero employees rebuilding after the storm of COVID, losing employees, 
and you're wanting to um, establish a presence in the schools for recu recruiting, but insecure about the current state of your salon. How can you effectively message to potential recruits in a confident and positive way to encourage them to join your salon? Oh my gosh, I love that. I think I think honesty. I mean, be be completely yourself. I mean, tell them, look, you know, I've I've had this before COVID, and this is what I this was my culture, this was my thing, this is what I've done. And then this happened to me, but you know, I'm still here talking to you and I'm looking to rebuild and I'm excited to rebuild and I'm looking for someone that wants to get on this train with me. I think that that's huge because the more that you show people the vulnerable side of you, you don't wanna have all the answers. You're not perfect and they're not perfect. So it's kind of like, oh my gosh, I can relate to her or him. You know, I can have this relationship with them because I get it. And um, and you're going to have people that want to get on that that train with you. You really are because you've you've told them a very vulnerable side of, of you. So I think that that is a big thing for you to do is to be honest and use it as your story. Keep, keep going. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. This is my story. You know, it's not perfect, and I'm here at this beauty school, and I'm going to keep coming back. So mm -hmm. I love that. Okay, yeah. I want to add something to that answer because that was a great answer but also that's an opportunity for you to reset your story and reset your culture and your salon so maybe pre-covid there were things that you know you yeah. were not happy about or well not it's time for you to say this is how i want my business going forward and you can lay that all out with a whole new team yeah oh my gosh that's amazing yeah it sounds like if you're rebuilding you are passionate and you're going to have passion is going to come through right that passion as you're rebuilding yeah. is really going to come through so i Absolutely. think that's good yeah um next question uh do the majority of salons in pennsylvania offer health insurance hmm do the majority you know i don't know i don't really know that question i think i think a lot of salons are doing that right now um, you know, the, we, we connect with quite a few salons and I've seen like no other people getting on board with it. Um, I think that it has to make sense for you, but definitely if they can, they will. Great. Thank you. Um, tips on combating burnout. Hmm. I honestly, you know, this is, again, this is a huge topic for myself. I think that if you can give them resources to fill themselves up or, you know, how to, we have such young stylists or young professionals that start in this company. And if we can give them the tools to communicate effectively and understand that what this person in my chair is telling me is very heavy and how can I digest this? If you can give them the tools to do that, I think you're going to have a very effective employee. So whether that's, you know, going to meditation classes or, you know, yoga, whatever that is, I, you know, it can be way different for everybody. It can look different for everybody. But I think giving them the tools to close that circle for themselves is huge. You can't fill from an empty cup, right? Yeah, definitely. No, no. Great, great. All right. Um, hourly plus commission stylists allowed to advertise on their own social media without the attachment of their current salon or allowed to work one to two days um, in other salons as a booth rent. How do you handle this? Meaning like they work in. I don't I don't, think I, hmm. I don't think I understand the question. Do they work in two different places? It sounds like it. It sounds like there's a couple of different scenarios here. Sounds oh, like okay. one, one. Yeah, sorry. Maybe I should have split it up. Hourly <laughs> plus commission stylists allowed to advertise on their own social media without the uh -huh. attachment of their current salon. Hmm. I, I don't know how they could be very effective to do that. Um, I think that they need to advertise where they're working, what their hours are. You know, this is this is how you find me. I don't know if they're going to be very effective to doing something like that. That doesn't make sense to me. I would say coach definitely more towards, you know, utilizing that space, especially if you have social media and you can repost for them. You know, look, you have to tag us because then I can repost it. You know, something like that conversation would be really helpful. 
I think I can share also on that too, is when you have a team of people collectively sharing posts and, you know, feed to your business, you have a bigger presence as the business when you're sharing the company that you work for than just your own personal brand. And each person does want to create their own brand of who they are as a, as a professional stylist, but you have a bigger presence when you collaborate with the team and the company that you work for. Yeah, definitely. I, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. It sounds like there's another scenario that this person might be dealing with as well. Um, or that, or a person is allowed to work, you know, one or two days in another salon. Mm -hmm. So maybe they work in one salon and they're, you know, trying so to for, them uh, for us, we, that's something that is a non-negotiable for us. We don't have contracts or anything like that. We don't, we don't believe in them, but, um, you know, we want someone that's committed to us, to who we are, and someone that buys into our culture and, and you know, our systems and things like that. We want to build them up effectively. So if we're going to invest in someone in that way, then we don't want them to split up their time. We want them to focus their entire, you know, what they can focus on in our company. So I wouldn't encourage it, but if it's something where you're in that type of situation where maybe someone's moving and you know they're they're looking to move you know a whole town over or something maybe that could make sense but i'm i'm not really sure i would support that actually i think with your point earlier too and you just said investing again but showing and this could be the why of showing the service provider or stylist this is why this would be a conflict of interest for you to also work in this other yeah. business is because we have invested, you know, the education, this is how much it costs for us to train you for six to eight weeks up front and the ongoing education that we provide for you and the flexibility that we provide for you, yeah. where then you're taking that value of everything that we're giving you and providing that to another business. So there, you know, that it would be a conflict of interest. But I think everything that you said earlier, explaining that why and showing them, you know, why that is a non-negotiable for your business would probably help them make that decision because ultimately they're probably deciding between staying, leaving, right? Yeah. Instead of balancing both. Um, and that could help them make that decision. Absolutely. Yeah. Great. Great. Okay. Another real life scenario here. We are a two person operator salon and they've been wanting to grow with employees. Do you suggest commission based? or chair rental employees. Um, mm. Or we have thought of doing a blend of a loyalty ladder, starting at X commission, working to Y commission after being um, Z percent booked off for chair rental. So sounds like... Um, Gotcha. Yeah, so, yeah, then, yeah, I mean, it kind of goes back to this entrepreneur feel. Yeah, I mean, people definitely want to feel like they're a part of something. They want to feel like they have um, skin in the game and something bigger than what, they, what they're doing right now. And I think if you can give them something, maybe not a booth rental, because I do think that if you do have a culture in your salon, I think that that can get diluted if you're mixing the two. So, my suggestion would be to go one way or another, but if you did this blend, I think that you kind of you kind of lose who you are because now you have someone that really can run their whole business within your business and you know really can bring in different products, can do different services. You know, it's just it's something to definitely consider, but maybe they um they can be a part of like an ownership of the location. You know, maybe they have like a percentage of the salon or something like that where they can start to work towards or you know a scenario like that. I just I personally just feel like it kind of dilutes the culture of the salon if you're blending the two together. Okay. Okay. And this same person goes on to say, you know, um, they're turning away a lot of, uh, a lot of clients. Mm -hmm. So that's another facet to this decision as well. I would assume I just didn't want to read too much. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, they, they're going on to say that they're actually turning away a lot of, a, a lot of clients. Yeah. I mean, we're in the same boat. We're totally in the same boat. And the thing is, I think, that the quality of what you're giving the clients, the experience that you're giving them, that's that's 
way more valuable than having I, that's a that's a really amazing problem to have right we have the same issue with with so many clients wanting to come in and um and we just we try our best to accommodate everyone in every way but i think you know don't dilute on the experience that you're given the the client because you know a bad experience starts to really um wildfire everywhere so i think that that's something to really focus on you know are you giving this client the experience that they need the time that they need and um and focus on that quality hey, thank you um, um is your salon commission-based or hourly if so have you been if so how have you been how have you managed to outlast salons losing members to booth renting Hmm. I know. Um, so we are we're hourly and commission. So when a stylist is starting out, they have this hourly base pay. And, you know, they actually when they first start out, they have the opportunity to hit commission right away. Um, so we look at week by week, if their commission is higher than their hourly rate, then we would pay them that and vice versa. So they always have this cushion to rely on. And, you know, again, going back to the why, so why we do this and why our culture is the way that we do is really something that we have to focus on right now because these suites are new for us on the East Coast and they are real and they, definitely have made their presence here but why why are our employees wanting to stay right and why can we or how can we help support them in every aspect of their lives so that's our main focus right now and we need to just continue to stay consistent and consistency is is pretty much the the name of the game at this point and if someone again is going to leave you know, wish them the best and you know hopefully they can come back when they're ready <laughs> so you know it's just it it's just kind of like this new thing that's happening and we're kind of navigating it as well but again just continuing talking about that why okay um next question do you require deposits for new clients or clients who no show or are last minute cancellations okay so this is a definite topic that we've been going through and we really we don't as a whole but if we have a client that is a habitual no-shower and is continuing to do that to our stylist then we will start to require a deposit and and we do take it and give it to the stylist if again they're not showing up because we it's important to to give them that that money that they're losing out on in their big appointments and that's it's a shame that that that's happening but um again we're trying to walk this fine line where we've never done deposits before so you know it's just something that's new for us and trying to navigate it that way and it's been it's been effective so we're continuing to, to explore it I want to share one thing on that too. So, because that's going to be different per company, per business, per okay. service provider too. And if the person asking that question or anybody watching is currently using Rosie as your service provider or for your software, if you run your cancellations report and you look at your no shows, and you can see, you know, how many people are not showing up for your appointments. You see the service that they're can't, they're not showing up for. Are they extensions? Are they smoothing treatments? Are they high ticket services? You get an idea of the value that you're losing out. And so really that is at your discretion. Like look at that and see, so maybe that's not, the case in, in Ashley's situation or in her business, but maybe that is for you and you have a lot of people that are just not showing up, It best practice would be, maybe you wanna introduce that cancellation policy. Yeah. Maybe you wanna start putting a credit card down on file. Maybe you wanna you know, start taking deposits at least for those high ticket services um, to help prevent you know, those no-shows that are happening. And it does help prevent or help to support the service provider who you know had that time scheduled out that now they're just yeah. open for it. For sure. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah. Right. That for now is the end of the questions. Thank awesome. you so much for all those great questions. 
So everybody will get a recording of um, the webinar today. And in that is going to be Ashley's um, podcast. So she has a really great podcast. I know she's had Michael Cole on the last couple of times and he's always great to hear from. So um, I know I like to follow those as well. So go ahead and follow her podcast. Uh, you can get it on Spotify or your podcast on your iPhone, right? Um, yeah. Ashley, is there any last thing that you'd like to share before we go? Oh, no, just thank you so much for having me. This is awesome. amazing. This is fun. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for joining. All such good information, and I think very valuable information to our salons and people out in the business today and just kind of their experiences of what they're going through because it is a changing time, and um, learning and adapting to something new is, is hard sometimes, but I think that you're doing it really well, and, and thank you for everything that you've shared today. Awesome. Yeah, and if anybody wants to reach out to me personally, I'm so for it so that would be great awesome perfect thanks ashley thanks everybody yeah. have a great day bye Thank you.